Question two. Better known as a clothing company, records of past sales show that 30% of people who come into a store buy at least one item of clothing. She would like to increase the proportion of people who buy at least one item. She believes that social media advertising will achieve this. Let P the, be the proportion of people who buy at least one item of clothing after Bethan has carried out social media advertising. Part A states suitable hypothesis to test Bethan's belief. So Bethan's belief is that if she uses social media advertising, she will increase the proportion of people that buy at least one item from her store. The null hypothesis is what is happening originally, and originally 30% of people come into the store buy at least one item. So the null hypothesis H0 is that P is equal to 0.3. We then got to decide whether this is a one-tail or a two-tail test. But she would like to increase the proportion, so we want P to be greater than 0 0.3, and this is a one-tail test. So the alternative hypothesis H1 is P is greater than 0 0.3. She now considers the first 50 people who come into her store after she carries out social media advertising to be a random sample and observes that 21 of them buy at least one item of clothing. Part B, carry out an appropriate test at the 5% level of significance, stating clearly the conclusions that Bethan should reach. So we want to think about what distribution that we're looking at. She has 50 people and 21 of them buy at least one item of clothing. And we know originally the probability of buying at least one item of clothing is a probability of 0 0.3. So we're considering a binomial distribution where n is 50 and p is equal to 0 0.3 and we find that 21 people buy at least one item of clothing. So if x is the number of people that buy at least one item of clothing, we're looking at binomial n is 50 and p is 0 0.3, the original probability and we observe that 21 of them buy at least one item of clothing so this is our test statistic when we're doing a significance level test we want to find the probability that 21 or more extreme occur well, more extreme must be further away from the mean. If x is 50, 0 0.3 binomial, then the mean is NP, which is 50 times 0 0.3, which is 15. Our observation is 21. We want the observed value or more extreme. So we want to think about that is the probability of x is greater or equal to 21. So we'll calculate the probability that x is greater or equal to 21 using the ClassWiz calculator. So switch on the ClassWiz calculator and press menu 7 which will give us the stats menu. And we get this display, which gives a normal distribution, an inverse normal, a binomial probability distribution, but we want the cumulative distribution function. So if we scroll down, so when we scroll down, we get this. 
We want the probability that x is greater or equal to 21, but the class with the cumulative distribution will show the probability of x is less than or equal to something. So the probability that x is greater or equal to 21 is equal to 1 minus the probability of x is less than or equal to 20. So we feed in x as 20, n as 50, there were 50, and the probability of success is 0 0.3. After each one, pressing equals, and if we press equals again, we get 0 0.9522 to four decimal places. So we're going to feed that into our calculator. So we found out the probability x is less than the 20 is 0 0.9522. So the probability of x is greater than 21 is 1 minus 0 0.9522, which is 0 0.0478, which is less than 5%. So it is in the extreme 5% of happening. So we are going to reject H0 and accept H1 that by doing social media advertising that the number of people that buy at least one item of clothing or more has increased. Part C. What else would Bethan need to consider in order to decide whether or not to continue social media advertising? Well, she'd need to consider how much the advertising cost her. Um, she would want to know what um, the increased profit would be to try and offset that against the cost of advertising so she could then make her decision as to what she wanted to do. And again, there could be any other factors that were reasonable to put in at this stage. Ali also owns a clothing company. From past experience, he knows that 29% of people who come into his store buy at least one item of clothing. He starts selling a new brand of clothing and notices during the following weeks, 35% of people buy at least one item of clothing. He carries out a statistical test using this data on the following hypotheses, where he does the proportion of people who buy at least one item of clothing. H0 is theta was 0.29, H1 is theta is greater than 0.29. Part D, state the fundamental error in Ali's statistical tests and explain what he should have done, including appropriate height. So Ali has constructed the alternative hypothesis based on his observations, but the hypothesis should be formed independently of the data. So a better hypothesis would be an H0 that theta equals 0 0.29 and the alternative hypothesis is theta is not equal to 0 0.29 because he was just investigating what had happened here and wanted to see if there was any difference. So we're looking at a two-tailed test. We could look at part B again from a different point of view. Part B says carry out an appropriate test at the 5% level of significance, stating clearly the conclusion that Bethan should reach. So we could find the critical region for a 5% significance level test and see if we can find a decision rule for that. We know that x was binomial 50 0.3 where x was the number of people that buy at least one item of clothing. So if we set up a cumulative binomial on the class waves and feed in that x is 19 n is 50, p is 0 0.3, press equals, this will give us the probability x is less than or equal to 19, which is 0 
So that means the product X is greater or equal to 20, which is equal to 0 0.0848, so over 8%. So this isn't small enough to be critical region. So we look again. So if we now put in that X is 20 and it's 50p is 0 0.3, press equals we get the probability that x is less than or equal to 20 which is 0 0.9522 so the probability that x is greater or equal to 21 is 1 minus the 0 0.9522 which is 0 0.0478 so this is under the 5% so our decision rule can be that x is 21 or more and she did observe 21 so we know that we can reject h0 and accept that h1 that the probability of buying at least one item of clothing is greater than 0.3 So what we have on the screen to start with is we have a bar chart showing individual probabilities for various numbers, various outcomes, and we have a cumulative graph here. So we can see that we've cross-hatched the values 21, 22, and so on up to 50, and that represents the critical region. Here we've put a dotted line across to the axis and this value here tells us what the value above this point up to 1 so this represents the probability of greater than or equal to 21 given the probability in the binomial distribution is 0 0.3 as in the question and that was the 30 percent of people buying at least one item of clothing, which was the original situation. So, we concluded that there was evidence at the 5% level of significance to suggest that social media advertising has increased the proportion of people who buy at least one item of clothing. And what that means is the 5% level of significance means that the total area of these bars here, plus these trivial ones going up to 50, but all the bars from 21 onwards add up to less than 5%. And we can see that here, that they add up to 0 0.0478. And the conclusion is that there's enough evidence that this is unlikely enough to happen when P is 0 0.3 at the 5% level of significance to suggest that P may have increased. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to add in another distribution in green which has the variable probability which we can show using the slider. So if we were to move the probability up to 0.31 then we can see, and if I turn off the original 0 0.0478, we can see that now the probability is 0 0.0657 of getting 21 or above. Now that's outside the 5% range. So if the original percentage of people had been 31%, then we would have concluded there was insufficient evidence to reject H0. And this shows that the margins on this sort of in this sort of situation can be very slight. If we push P up further, so let's say to 0 0.35, then had there been 35% then we would definitely not be able to reject the null hypothesis. Now it's worth thinking of those in terms of numbers. If we go back to 0 0.31 again, remember that 
the 30% of 50, which were the first 50 people she considered for the survey, uh, I think it's mentioned in the question, that would be 15 people. Now, 21 out of 50 would be 42%. Now, if we had a probability of 0 0.31 with 50 people, then that would have been the result if 15 and a half people had bought something. Okay, now 15 and a half people aren't going to buy anything because half people don't buy things. But if we go to 0 0.32, that would be 16 people. So what it's saying now, because that's now up at 8%, or 0 .0, well, nearly 9%, 0 0.0882, is that had the original proportion been 16 out of the 50, then a rise to 21 would not have been significant at the 5% level. So that tells us it's a finely balanced question, but it also shows that these situations are finely balanced. But the hope is that by having a look at the graphs and what's happening with the distributions, you can see what it means. So at 0.3, the cumulative probability of 21 or more is less than 5%, and so we think it's unlikely at that significance level that the probability would be 0 0.3, and there is evidence to suggest that the advertising has increased it. But what we see when we slide this along is that we don't have to increase that probability by very much in order for the result of the survey to have not suggested rejecting the null hypothesis.